In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Tag Manager to conduct simple A-B tests and measure the results within Google Analytics. All and more coming up right after this. Okay, today our journey starts at this next web post by Simon Bremen. Together with Martin Scheibler, they developed an A-B testing solution for the next web in order to run A-B test through Google Tag Manager on their website. Now this is a really large tag block and it makes sense to utilize the built-in capabilities of Google Tag Manager to do A-B testing for free. So if you want to find out more about their solution and how they use it at the next web, check out this post. They were also generous enough to write up their A-B testing solution in a GitHub repository where you can find the actual code that we will implement today. But let's start at the beginning. We want to implement an A-B test on our demo shop here. We already have Google Analytics installed through Google Tag Manager and we now just need to find a test subject. So I have chosen to actually look at this product page. We have a sale button here. What if that sale button would be a different color? Since we are dealing with Google Tag Manager and Google Tag Manager is based on JavaScript, we would need to know how to manipulate this element with the help of JavaScript. So you would need to know a little bit of JavaScript at least in order to know how to manipulate elements in the DOM with the help of JavaScript. So let's try this out. How would we pretest our manipulation? We can go into the developer tools, which we'll find under view and then JavaScript console. And we can select this element by right-clicking on it and inspecting this element. And we see in our JavaScript console that we are dealing here with a span element with the class of on sale. Now we can go over to our JavaScript console and select this element with the right commands. In our case, that would be document dot get elements by class name. Then entering the class name on sale. And we see that we return a correct statement here, which selects our element. Now, since this is an array, we'll choose the first element. And now we want to change the style of this element. And specifically, the background to something that we can choose, like green. Let's press enter here. And we see the element changes. And this is the command that we will use in order to execute our A-B test. Now the actual logic when to change the color will be done by an A-B testing script and we will use that script by the guys of the next web. So let's implement our A-B test through Google Tag Manager. Let's go over to Google Tag Manager. The first step would be to actually activate a built-in variable. Let's go over to variables and configure our built-in variable and look for the random number variable. This is a variable that will randomly pick a number and we can use that variable in our A-B testing script because then Google Tag Manager will decide randomly which version of the A-B test the user will see. So once we have activated that, we can go over to tags and implement our A-B testing tag. Let's give this all a name. This is a custom tag and it will execute our A-B test on the product pages. Now as a tag configuration, we'll go with our custom HTML tag and we can implement the code from the code repository here. Let's just go to raw and then mark this all, copy it. And before we paste it into our custom HTML tag, we actually need to surround it by script tags. But then we can paste it in and we now have a fully built testing solution. What will this actually do? Well, first of all, it will execute our A-B test. It will also set a cookie. So if the user has already seen one or the other version, he will continue seeing that for the duration of the test. You can also 
set an expiry date and whatever version the user sees will be pushed into the data layer. So there are data layer pushes built in. All we need to do is to implement our execution of what we want to happen once a variation should be shown. So let's go down here. First of all, we have here a prefix. This is for the data layer. You can change that over. In this case, it's the next web. Let's call this demo shop. You see here that it uses our random number variable. And then we have here our changes that we can implement. Now you can do multivariate testing. You can also test multiple variants at the same time, but we just want to do a simple AB test. So we'll delete our second variables here. And just in this column, we need to input our function that we want to execute once the variant should be shown. So we already prepared this. So let's go back. We have here our little code that we can copy again, put it into our execution function. So it will execute once our variant should be shown. All right, that's it. Now we can go ahead and configure our trigger. And we just need to choose the side that we want to have this firing on. In our case, in our case, we want this just on this Flying Ninja page for now. So let's copy just the URL and input that as a page view trigger as early as possible. Only some page views. We'll go with URL path contains our URL here. Let's give this a proper name. This will fire on a page view and it will fly on our Flying Ninja page. All right, let's save this save our tag and try this all out. Let's go into the preview and debug mode, which you can also reach behind this button here. And this will put our browser into the right state. Let's close our developer tools and we see our site reloaded and it already fired the first AB test because we can see the AB test event here in the data layer. So let's look into the data layer and we can actually see that it was something was pushed here and it actually shows us the version that was shown. In our case, it's zero, which means this is the actual control and not the variant. Now, if I reload this page, nothing really happens and we get the same variables again. That's because we have a cookie now stored that will ensure that we don't see multiple different other variations and then screw up our test. So we'll be able again to access our developer tools in order to get rid of that cookie, just to test it out. Under applications, we have our cookies here and we see a cookie is stored, which is this DS cookie or whatever you have as a prefix that you can delete just to see if it works. Let's reload this again. Unfortunately, we're getting again, apparently the control version. Let's delete this again. Try it out again. No, no luck this time. This can take a while. And here we go. We see that our code executed and this time we got the green button. Now, if you reload this again, you can also see the big downside because Google Tag Manager is actually loading asynchronously. So you see a little bit of a flash effect once you reload this page. But our IB test works on that basis. And if you're okay with these changes that are made, we'll be able now to analyze the results. Now, all we need to do is capture data and analyze our results. And this can be done with the help of Google Analytics. So in Google Tag Manager, we already saw that there's an event pushed into the data layer. And we just need to pull out the data of the right variant and transfer that data to Google Analytics in order to later then see which users converted based on our changes. So how would we do that? First of all, we need to prepare a data layer variable to pull out this value. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager under variables. We can build a new user defined variable. This will be our data layer variable of the type event action. We'll go with the variable configuration here and choose 
our data layer variable and enter the key that is here, event action. Let's save these. By the way, you could also recreate the event category and the event label. I will leave that out because these will static for us. But if you want to fill them dynamically, then you could be recreating those as well. Now all we need to do is send our data to Google Analytics and we'll do this via a Google Analytics event tag. Let's take as a tag configuration, we'll choose universal analytics. I have already a tracking ID saved in a constant variable. So we will use that. And as a track type, we'll choose event. Now we can utilize our event variables. For the category, I haven't created one. So I'll just hard code it with a B test. Then the action should be dynamically filled with the variant that was shown. So we can choose event action. And if you don't want this to affect our bounce rate, then we change the non-interaction hit to true. Now, if you want to be more sophisticated with your A-B test, you can even set a custom dimension to make sure that your test results get stored on a user basis in a custom dimension. But we won't do this for now. We'll go ahead and build a trigger and this trigger will be based on the custom event that is sent to the data layer, which is this AB test. So this will be a custom event and it will fire on AB test. Let's configure this, choose our custom event here. And as an event name, we go with our AB test. This needs to model exactly what it says here in the event key. Let's save this. Save our Google Analytics tag and refresh our preview and debug mode. Let's go back to our page, refresh that as well. And you see that we're getting the first variation here, our AB test data layer event fired. And based on that, our Google Analytics event tag fired and transferred that data over to Google Analytics. So we should be able to see that also in Google Analytics itself in the real time reporting, you can go here to events. And there was just an event that happened. Let's go over to last events because this is a non interactive event. And we see our AB test with the event action DS11. So we have here our variation number one. So every time somebody sees a different variation, this would fire an event. Now what can we do with this data? Within Google Analytics, you can obviously look at how many people saw different variations under the behavior report. So this is the different variations that we saw. And now you can match that up with actual conversion data. If you have, for example, an e-commerce shop, it would be good to capture conversions on a purchase basis. You could also build in a goal for a button click. And that's what we have done previously. So we have to find our goals correctly and you can build a custom report that shows you your AB test results based on how many people saw your version and then how many people click on your add to cart or purchased a product. Now this report is not yet filled because it takes a while to populate once you have sent data in. Obviously, you would also need to make sure that your test is actually significant and see which variation actually has won. There are multiple calculators out there that can do this for you. Where you can enter your visitors to each version, the overall conversions, you'll get conversion rates and your results that will tell you how much better the conversion was but also the significance level that lets you know whether your AB test is actually valid. Don't forget at the end, if you want to publish this to your users, then you can go ahead and publish a version to in Google Tag Manager, give this whole a name, 
and your tests will be live for your users. So there you have it. This is how you can build a simple A-B test with the help of Google Tag Manager. Really a great way to A-B test your site in an affordable manner with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you want to find out more, check out the resources in the description below. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we'll bring you more of these tutorials every week. My name is Julian. Till next time.